Good morning, church. How are you all doing? Today is a special celebration. It's Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Holy Week. We're going to have a creative challenge later today during the teaching time. So if you haven't already, I invite you to grab some paper or cardboard and some pencils and crayons or felt, and we're going to use it uh, later during the teaching time to draw some palm waves to Jesus. All right, so we'll give you a second to do that. One second, there you go. <laughs> and I'm going to read from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. And you can read along with me in your homes. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations, his rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, would you come and meet with us now? Wherever we are gathered, Lord, we thank you that where two or more are gathered, whether it's in person or online, God, you are with us. So, Holy Spirit, we declare that you are here and that we want to be here to meet with you this morning. We want to worship you and we want to come and encounter you. So, Holy Spirit, would you encounter us, meet us with your hope and your peace and your joy. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Our songs today might not be as familiar with REC Kids, so we just, you know, try to follow along, and, uh, and hopefully you'll pick it up soon. They should be pretty easy. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. Our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let our shout. your word move in power let what's dead come to life we are here for you we are here for you to you our hearts to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. 
hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Oh, let your fire fall down. Well, we are coming near to the end of the season of Lent. This is Palm Sunday. Next week is Easter Sunday. So let's say together the collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to share the peace. So through the virtual world, we're going to share peace. Peace with be with you. Peace, Josh. <laughs> Hands <laughs> up in the air. Right. And we have a few announcements that we want to share. The first announcements are just over our Holy Week celebrations. Is this, uh, is it okay? Okay. Uh, so we're going to have Maundy Thursday. Uh, there will be a broadcast at what time, Iggy? I think it's 7, right? 7, yeah. 7 o'clock. Uh, so that'll be broadcast, I believe, on the REC Family Facebook page. And then we're going to have Good Friday service, 11 a.m., as well as an Easter Sunday service next week. And we want to just really celebrate and, and worship our God together, remembering and celebrating mm -hmm. these important days in our church calendar. We also will have today, after our service, just as we did last week, we'll have the sharing table, uh, just a Zoom gathering for us to be sharing into each other's lives. It'll be happening right after at noontime. And so you're welcome to join us. Uh, if you need login details, please directly message Iggy, uh, and he will pass on those details to you. Maybe um, even the moderator could post them in the, oh, the that's Facebook right. feed right now. If you're watching, you know you can leave Facebook comments. People are posting comments. The moderator can do that as well. All right. Uh, and just a reminder also for those youth who are in high school, uh, please come and hang out with us uh, Friday nights at 7.30. We have been continuing on. We've had quite a number of you show up, and we would love to continue gathering. And those of you who haven't yet had a chance to join us, please come and join us, as well as our university and career groups. Vance has a group on Mondays that meets online at 7.30, and Gary has a group that meets on Fridays at 7.30 for young adults. Uh, if you haven't yet connected with a group, we would love to connect with you. Don't stay isolated. Don't stay alone. Let's be church together. Now we're going to have our time of offering and tithes. And in Scripture, God constantly reminds his people of the blessings that he has poured out on them and calls them to return those things back to him, that the things that belong to us don't actually belong to us. They actually belong to God. And so when we offer our tithe, we're just giving God back a part of what he's given to us. Let's read together from Malachi. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10 Your presence is all I need, it's all I want, it's all I seek, and without it, without it, there's no meaning. Your presence is the air I breathe. The song I sing and the love I need And without it, without it I'm not living 
I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. There is no one like you, God. I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. No other name be lifted high. Your presence is. Your presence is all I need, it's all I want, it's all I seek, and without it, without it, there's no meaning. Your presence is the air I breathe, the song I sing, and the love I need. Without it, I'm not living. I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. There is no one like you, God. I will exalt. I will exalt. Like you, God. 
say the offering prayer. All things come from you, God, and of your own do we give you. Amen. And now we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we'll have Vance come and read the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when they drew near to, near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Amen. All right. So let us pray to our Lord. Jesus, we thank you that you are the Lord who comes on a donkey. You are the king who comes on such a humble vessel. And we thank you, Lord, that you come to rescue us. Uh, you come to rescue us, riding lowly but righteous, and you are exalted, Lord. So come to us today, Lord, so that we may welcome you into our hearts, welcome you into our homes, into our workplaces, welcome you as a global church. Lead us, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. If you're just tuning in to our on live stream, I hope you're all doing well. Today is the beginning of Holy Week. It's the beginning of Easter and it is a time when we celebrate uh, the coming of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. Your king is coming. That's what the title slide says, right? You see the little picture of a donkey. It's kind of a funny picture, isn't it? When you imagine a king, but he's riding not a big mighty horse, but a little teensy little donkey. He's not riding high, but he's riding low. You know, it was a very strange picture because in the ancient times, in the Roman Empire, which is the times that Jesus was living in, the emperors would go to visit different cities. The kings would visit, and they would make big announcements, and they would come on, on the horses and chariots. They would announce these things, and the king would ride into the center of the city, and people would bow to him. But Jesus asked his disciples, go get a, a donkey. Not just a donkey, but a colt, the foal of a donkey, which means a baby donkey, not even one year old. So a tiny little donkey as prophesied by the prophets, Zechariah. It is a strange picture, isn't it, that the king would come not riding on a mighty horse, but a little donkey. It's almost like uh, when 
the, the prime minister or presidents, they come into uh, power. You know, the president is inaugurated, right? I, uh, there's a picture there I put of our prime minister, Trudeau, right? Uh, Matt, do you remember that picture when he first won the election and the, the, the real change is coming to our nation, right? And all the cheers and applause and it's a glorious sight, right? Or who can ever forget uh, President uh, Donald Trump, uh, his campaign, you know, make America great again. Uh, or uh, think back to President uh, Barack Obama saying, yes, we can. And people cheered and the, the crowds roared as they welcomed the inauguration of the president. Jesus, in this way, is also being inaugurated as the king, as the king of kings, as the Messiah, the anointed one. But it's a different welcome because he's coming on a little donkey. The slide in Matthew, you can go to the next one. It says, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey. When we think of a leader or think of a king, usually gentle is not the word to describe him. Usually it's strong and mighty and in control, uh, but Jesus is the gentle king. He comes on a gentle donkey so that even the little kids, no matter how short they are, can see him. Hey, Jesus. Right? Kids, all of you, Jesus sees you. He sees you there uh, reaching out to him. And which... Earlier, we said that we're going to ask you to get some paper. So maybe if you have paper and felt, you can bring it along. We're going to get into that very soon. Because I'm going to talk about the welcome, of how we welcome the king with our waving and shouts of joy. In Zechariah uh, chapter 9, verse 9, that uh, Pastor Josh read earlier, it says, Rego- Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. Can you just raise a shout in your home right now? Yeah, I know it's weird, but just raise a shout. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> A bit silly, but hey, give each other a high five. Rejoice to our king. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You know, when Jesus was riding in as the righteous king, he came not as some God on the top overpowering his people saying, hey, you need to do this. But no, he came down to our midst as a human being to be with us. That's the kind of king we have. He understands us. So if you look at that little slide that says Hosanna, Jesus is riding in on the little foal of the donkey. You see a lot of people welcome him, welcoming him with the palm leaves. Normally, we get to welcome each other with palm leaves and walk around the church. Uh, this year, we are not able to do that. But this year, we have a special creative challenge. And the challenge is we wanted to create our own palm leaves through our hands. Palm. Get it? Palm waves. We're going to make that. So maybe can I ask the crew to help me move the board over? And if you're at home, you can grab your uh, paper or cardboard or whatever it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to trace our hands uh, onto the paper. And then you're going to make your own design uh, to welcome Jesus. It's okay. I think, is this in the camera properly? Can you guys see it? Yep. He says, okay. So we're just going to trace our palms. And then, well, I guess I won't really hold the mic. I'm just going to wait, advance or hold it, but keep some distance. It's okay. Just, I think it's okay. So I'm just going to put down the mic for a sec, and I'm just going to trace my hands, right? That's the first one. It's good I'm doing this slowly, so you have lots of time at home uh, to trace it, okay? So if you ha- you're you just getting your paper now, don't panic. Don't worry, we got time. So take your time. Have some fun in your family. I would love to see all your palms once we're done. You post it on the Facebook comments, okay? Because we want to see the a picture of the palm. Maybe if you too, maybe you just hold it like that. We can see your palm waves with your lovely face. That would be great. And we'll make a collage of it at the end. It will be so awesome to welcome you. So I'm going to draw my other palm now. All right, something like that. I hope you can draw much prettier palms than I can um, at home. You can be very creative. Here, I'm just doing it quickly. So make your own design on the palm, okay? We're just using this to welcome Jesus. So maybe this one. I'm going to write a... Abba loves Iggy. And then this one, I don't know, I'll write Hosanna, which means he saves. 
you can be creative. Hey, make some nice color drawings. Uh, you can even change the design to be something else. I'm sure you can be very creative with that. So maybe you can help me move the board back over. Thank you. You know, the word Hosanna has a meaning. The word Hosanna means he saves or he who comes to save. You might see a footnote in your Bible that refers to a psalm. I think it's Psalm 118 where it talks about uh, the Messiah coming to save his people. So today, Jesus says he is coming to save us. That's right. We are in the midst of an unprecedented time of sickness, of the virus spreading across the globe. But isn't it interesting that it seems like more than ever, we've been more connected in, in any way. Because you talk to your friends across the globe, whether it's in Asia, in Africa, in South America, in Europe, everyone knows what is going on. And everyone is turning their hearts to the Lord and saying, Jesus, we need you to rescue us. And so we make that our prayer today on Palm Sunday. We say, Lord, we are weak. We need you to come and save us. But there's a question you have to ask yourself, and that question is, who actually welcomes the king? Are you welcoming the king into your life? Let's go back to that picture. If you look into the picture, you see lots of different people, kids, parents, uh, welcoming Jesus. But they're in, it's a cartoon, right? So there's a little group you see, kind of these uh, nasty-looking uh, Pharisees, the teachers, who don't actually want to welcome him. Do you know what's very interesting? Because the Bible is talking about two groups of people. One group, the people who welcome Jesus, are kind of the outsiders. They're the people who are not educated, who don't know God's word very well. But they're excited that this Messiah is coming in uh, to rescue his people. So they welcome, they say, yes, Jesus. They're the ones who are sick. They're the ones who are healing. But there's another group, which are the well-educated teachers, the religious people, the people who have been to church all their lives and saying, hey, we're too good for this. We don't need you. We can uh, uh, know God's word ourselves. We can teach you. And they reject Jesus. Who welcomes the king, the strong or the weak? I want to read that passage, uh, which is in Matthew 21, 14 to 15. And it says, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. Jesus healed them. The sick, those who cannot walk, Jesus saves them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. That means they didn't like what Jesus was doing. They were angry at Jesus for bringing uh, this crowd of people, these uneducated foreigners, outsiders into the temple. They were frustrated. But Jesus chose to heal the sick, the outsiders, the people who had nothing, the people who had no hope. They welcomed Jesus, and Jesus healed them. You know, this week has been quite a week uh, for my family. On uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day, we had quite a memorable day. Uh, in the morning, my, my brother uh, had ki kidney stones, was in terrible pain, so he went to the emergency. And then after that, in the afternoon, Zoe and, and I, our family, Zo Anna, Zoe, and me, we were fine. But then, for some reason, she somehow got a Lego piece uh, toy stuck in her nose. And she panicked at first. Of course, we all panicked. We said, well, wait, let's, let's just pray. Let's hold on a second. So we, we called some people, messaged some people, and we realized at that time that we just needed to bring her to the BC Children's Emergency. We're so thankful that in that time of what could have been like wailing and crying, we just prayed, we helped Zoe calm down, and she just kind of lay down in Anna's lap, and she just took a nap to rest. Praise the Lord that she didn't cry more to suck the piece up her nose some more. We all know how scary that is when our children do things like that. So then we brought her to the emergency, BC Children's Emergency, and only Anna could go in with her. Only one parent's allowed. So I just stayed outside. We were there for not one hour, not two hours, but for five hours. So what did I do? There's nothing I could do. I don't want to keep messaging Anna to stress her out. So I said, okay, just update me when you need to. I'm just going to pray. So I walked. I just walked around the hospital, BC Children's, around that neighborhood, and I just prayed and I prayed and I prayer walked. And I was kind of keeping track on my watch. I ended up walking two times. I walked three kilometers for the first time, two kilometers for the second time. So I walked 5K prayer walk. It was a good walk. Thank the Lord it was a beautiful day. But I could just, in that moment, I was talking with Jesus and saying, wow, Jesus, thank you that you are the king who comes on a donkey. 
that you come to reach out to us, reach down to us where we are in our weakness. You're the king who doesn't come and ask us to be mighty and strong, but you are the one who comes when we are the most weak. You come to heal us, just like you heal uh, the lame and, and the sick here. Thank you, Jesus, that you are that kind of king. So this week, you've been feeling really tired and stressed. Take heart. Daddy says to you, Abba, Father, our daddy says, my son, my daughter, I care for you. I love you. I come to you. I bring my king Jesus to you to save you. So just shout out Hosanna. In all your weakness, you don't have to pretend to know everything. You don't have to pretend everything at work is going okay. Parents, you don't have to tell your kids everything is fine when it's not. You can be honest. And kids, if you are uh, have an accident, if you cry, if you're worried about school, it's okay. Those of you in high school, you're worried about graduating. You're worried about where you're going to go next year. You're stressed out because you can't meet your friends. It's okay. Jesus says to you, I'm the king who rides a donkey to come into your life. So do you welcome the king into your life this week? The big question for us to really ask one another, ask our family this week, or online on the online Zoom calls, maybe even later uh, as we have the sharing table, is how are you welcoming the king into your home this week? How are you welcoming the king into your work and your school this week? Because when you welcome him, the king will ride on his donkey. Even though you are lowly, he will exalt you. He will bring healing to your life. He will speak peace to you, a peace that transcends all understanding. At the end of that whole ordeal on April Fool's Day, at the end of the day, I think we were there from 2 to, to, to 7 or 8 or so. At the end of it, praise God that Zoe was in good spirits. And she just said, happy April Fool's. And then she brought, showed me all her prizes from the children's hospital, and she was very happy. Oh, Abba, I went to three different rooms, and, and it was so good. And praise the Lord for that kind of peace that the Lord gives us. Thank you, Jesus, for the peace you give us in our time of struggle. Let's pray in our homes, wherever you are. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you send us your son, Jesus. He is the mighty king, the righteous king, but also the lowly king who rides on a donkey to come to meet us in our weakness. Jesus, you are the one who comes to heal us in our sickness. You are the one who protects us uh, from the sickness. You also speak words of peace and encouragement to us. So this week, Lord, may we hear your voice. May we hear you speak to us, lead us. Thank you, Lord, for your leading. You are the true king. We bless you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. Bless you. I believe now we're going to have a time of prayer, of confession, as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table, for Eucharist. So I will say the words in white, and then you can respond in your rooms with your families or by yourself with the words in yellow. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sin. sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart nor our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us, Forgive us our, our sin. sin. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So today is kind of special. We're going to be hosting the Holy Communion for the first time online like this. We have discussed as a pastoral team and also shared with other pastors among the Anglican Mission. We believe that because God sends us as Holy Spirit, it's by his Holy Spirit that his presence comes. And as we share the bread and the wine, we actually share in the presence of Jesus, a very real presence in our homes. 
In many ways, this is exciting because we are reclaiming the identity of the apostles, of the early church. You recall that the early church apostles, when they were living in fear when Jesus died, were breaking bread in their homes. And then Jesus just showed up. He said, hey, give me some fish. Give me some bread. I can eat it too. And they shared in the Lord's Supper together. So today, you see these stoles we brought. It's just as a symbol uh, to remind us Jesus is with us. So now Pastor Josh is going to officiate and lead us in the Eucharist. Uh, If you're at home, we encourage you, break some bread together at the time when he's breaking bread. You can bring some wine or you can bring some grape juice, whatever you like. Bring it, break the bread, and share the wine together. Is the Father with us? He is. Is Christ among us? He is. Is the Spirit here? He is. This is our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. We are redeemed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. Now at home you can take up your bread. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. His body body was was broken broken for us. us. In the same way, after supper, and you can take up the cup now. He took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Christ Christ has died. died. Christ Christ has risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. We We have have died died together, together. we We will will rise together, together. we We will will live live together. together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus Jesus is is Lord. Lord. This is the feast of victory. The The lamb lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Hallelujah. As Jesus taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So now in your homes, if there's more than one of you, I invite you to serve each other. And you can say as you're serving the bread, you can say the body of Christ broken for you. And as you share the wine or whatever beverage you have there that you are sharing, you can say the blood of Christ shed for you. And you can serve each other. We can't serve each other because we're keeping distance, so we'll partake in our own.
I'm giving myself and my family a little bit longer of a moment right now to serve <laughs> each other because there are six people who can, well, actually, Jake can, can even start to eat bread now. He started to eat some wafers and stuff and some, uh, yeah, even some softer bread. So, Jakey, here's for you. Body of Christ. Oh, no, wait. He hasn't been baptized yet. <laughs> Never mind, Jake, and you can't have any. <laughs> Soon. We'll bless you. I'll bless you at home, buddy. All right, <laughs> let's say together the com prayer after communion. Let's pray. Almighty God, Holy Father, we have sat at your feet, learned from your word, and eaten from your table. We give you thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out into the world with your blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of your spirit through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Amen. Now let's point to the cross. You can point, I guess, at your screens. All our problems, we, we send, send to the, the cross, cross of Christ. Christ. All our difficulties, we, we send, send to the cross of Christ. Christ. All the devil's works, we, we send, send to the cross of Christ. Christ. And all our hopes, we, we set on, on the, the risen, risen Christ. Christ. Receive the blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you, be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now let's respond. We're going to respond by singing stronger. There is love that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. You broke my shame sinfulness you rose again victorious faithfulness none can deny through the storm and through the fire there is truth that sets me free Jesus Christ who lives in me you are stronger you are stronger sin is broken you have saved me it is written christ is risen jesus you are lord of all beginning and no end. You're my hope and my defense. You came to seek and save the lost. You paid it all upon the higher be lifted higher be lifted higher so let your name be lifted higher be lifted higher be lifted higher so let your name be lifted higher be lifted higher be lifted higher one more time higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. You 
are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all, you are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of And receive this blessing. May Jesus, who is the stronger one, the overcomer, fill your lives with his strength so that he may turn your weakness into strength, that he may turn your sickness into health. May the Lord of all peace bless you and your family this week as you go in your homes, in your work, in your schools, in person or online, to have his power, to have his peace. Bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.